Warning, this video contains extraneous, extemporous, excessive blather. Timestamps will be in the description below. If you've ever wondered what a universal audio aux box sounds like compared to using a real cabinet with real mics going through a real preamp, this video is for you. Hey everybody, Dunskill here. Hope you're having a good day. My channel is growing thanks to your support. In the two years I've been around, I've gotten 115 subscribers, around 38,000 views, 78 followers on Facebook, I'm not sure how many on Instagram, and I'd like to thank all of my fan, or maybe both of you. Still, let's try and be positive as we round out the last video of 2022 in style. If this is your first time here, please consider liking and subscribing. I would think twice about ringing that bell thing though, it's kind of annoying. So as an end of the year gift and service to my fellow guitar slingers, I've decided to put together this video. We're doing it for reals, baby. We're going mics straight into the analog digital converter. Then we're going mics straight into the API 512 Vs. Then we're going aux box all the way, baby. That's about as enthusiastic as I can get. We're gonna hear them all one after another. Why? That is so tedious sounding. Yeah, and it's also hard to make. When I first thought about the idea of putting this video together, I was like, ah, ah, damn it. Ah, ah. Oh my. Yeah, the editing and preparation for a video like this is kind of tedious. I don't mean to complain. You know, it's YouTube, tough. And it's hard to impress people these days, let's be honest. But I thought this would make for some fun infotainment, and I haven't seen a lot of videos out there doing the same thing. Really, I'm just curious and want to see and hear the results for myself. Now, you might be in the market for a universal audio aux box or one of the Two Notes devices for home recording. I'm just recently getting into mic preamps and just picked up three API 512Vs. I got three of them so that I could record wet, dry, wet. And this video is kind of a follow up to my previous video on this topic. I'll put a card somewhere up here so that you guys can check it out. So we're going to do a three way comparison here. We're gonna run my guitar through my amp, through the Universal Audio aux box. We're also gonna use two Shure SM57s and a room mic, which I still have to pick through the API 512Vs. And we're also gonna take the same microphones and record them just direct into my analog to digital interface. So we'll be using three channels into Logic, and you'll hear three passes of guitar using different guitars. There'll be a clean sample, a dirty sample, and then a highly affected sample. All played three passes through, through the aux, through the preamps, and direct. So if you're in the market for home recording equipment, this video might just be your magic pillow. One thing is that at this point, I have no idea what the results are. I'm recording this video and commenting on it in real time. I am as an illusion anyway. So once I finish recording and filming, these uh, setup parts. I'm gonna do some editing and at the end of this video I'll give my own thoughts and comments. So my guitar is running through my Mesa Boogie Mark 535. It's going into a rectifier cabinet with two 12 inch Celestian Vintage 30 speakers. For mics I'm using two Shure SM57s and I'm still figuring out my room mic. The purpose of this video is to answer a couple questions for myself and maybe for you too. How does the aux compare to using real mics and a preamp? Does a preamp make you sound better? How do unicorns mate? So I made a list of things to keep this test fair and to summarize the limitations in a test of this sort. So like I said, I'm using a one by 12 cabinet uh, with two microphones and a room mic to simulate what the aux does. I used similar mics in the aux settings. Here are my settings. Super late post editing of the post edit here. I noticed two things when I was putting this video together. One is that, yeah, using a Shure SM7B is more of a broadcast mic, probably not the best one for a room mic, but I couldn't get my AKG C214 mic to work. It's a condenser, it's supposed to be on phantom power, but anyway, I got, I ran into some technical issues there. The other thing I noticed is that mics were placed on two different speakers in my 2x12 cabinet, whereas in the aux, they're pointed at the same speaker. All I could say is, oh well, life is too short to be peeling mushrooms. And I used a closed back cabinet to approximate both. I'm using the Ditto 2 uh, looper to record samples of my playing to equalize the dynamics because I have to record things twice. I only have two SM57s and a room mic, so I've got to record it through the preamps and then record it again. Like I said, kind of tedious, but I'm doing it for you. 
the volume levels are matched as humanly possible. Now the aux is also in true stereo, whereas uh, I'm sending uh, just three channels through the microphones. So any reverb or effects that you're gonna hear will be coming from pedals. And there's no post-processing, no EQ added or removed. By no means is this a super scientific test, it's really just best efforts here. Let's get into it! So to kick things off, I'm gonna record just using the camera audio. I'm gonna get my clean loop in. I'm using my Fender Jaguar, uh, John E. Marr signature here. Uh, I'm just using my Plethora X3 from TC Electronics. I'm using the Hyper Gravity Compressor and the Hall of Fame 2 reverb settings in it. So here's just the clean tone through the camera audio. For this next clip that you're going to hear through my GoPro Hero 9 to start, I'm playing my Sur Modern guitar. For distortion, I'm using the Jackson Audio Asabi Mateus Asado signature pedal. I'm using the Plexor, <coughs> I'm using the Plethora X3 to get reverb and delay. Just a bit.
for this last passage I'm playing my PRS Custom 24. It's from 2009 so it's a little old like me. So I'm going to be using a bunch of really cool effects and sounds here. Here's my clean sound. Adding a Maris Enzo. The Red Panda Particle V2 does this. Adding the Hologram Electronics Microcosm here now. Lastly, adding the Ranger FX Echo X V2 here. Well, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm quite chuffed about that test there. That was a, a bit of work, and I know I was whining about it before, but it was well worth it, and it was actually a labor of love in the end. I think I did answer my questions that I set out at the beginning, which were about, you know, is using a mic preamp better than using just amps straight into a analog to digital converter? And how does the aux box sound in comparison? So I could hear a difference. Could you hear a difference? I could hear a difference. Could you hear a difference? Just to make one thing clear, this video is not sponsored or supported by any of the brands or manufacturers seen here. So my opinions are this, guys. Now, to describe the situation, words can be hard. To quote the great Burton Cummings, I'm talking about words, phrases. Yeah, talking about sounds and how they make you feel can be very subjective. You know, words can be like, I don't know. Spudgety. Anyway, I did hear a difference in the three examples. Four if you count the ones with camera audio. And to be honest, it's kind of a little bit of what I expected. So the mics going dry into the analog to digital converter sounded kind of sterile. Sort of direct sounding and like kind of a flat response. Not a bad sound, but honestly in my recordings I've been treating it with lots of post-processing. So it sounds good but kind of sterile and a little bit brittle to me next up we had the api 512 v's and i gotta say i am very pleased with how they sound and on the great deal i got on them at the beginning of the video i was thinking and hoping and praying that the apis kind of livened up the sound and made it sound you know more lush and warm and vibrant that's kind of what i've read the reputation of api mike pre used to have but what i was hoping to get out of the api 512v was a lively response the mic running through that magical circuitry of those transformers on the input and outputs and all that other magical hoodoo stuff in the middle there really does something to the signal i 
at least to my ears. It was really tricky to dial it in to get the right level of gain and input volume and output volume going into my analog to digital converter. So that took a minute to figure out. But once I got it dialed in and everything kind of balanced and equalized compared to just the mic dry level and the aux, I really do think the API 512V sound good. And lastly, and probably most controversially, was the aux box. Now, I thought it sounded really, really good. The signal sounded nice and sort of stripped of too much, I don't know what you'd call it, abundant frequencies and things. Like with the APIs, I'd still have to do a bunch of EQ. It's a very full-bodied signal, lots of harmonic depth there. I think with the aux, it's a lot more tailored and, and a lot sort of ready to use. Like I said at the beginning, that was just a close approximation of what, you know, the Mesa Recto cab here is doing, or sorry, Rectifier cab. So if I had to rank them, going direct in was my least favorite. The aux was next, and my favorite sounds that I was getting uh, were coming from the API 512Vs. I guess I should have known better, but it never hurts to test these kinds of things. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Really enjoyed making this video. It was quite revealing. <sighs> Same as you. Tone. Yeah. You are what you do. Man is defined by his tone. Please take my hand. Now open your mind to me. Please. 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 Open your mind. Please. Open your mind. Open your mind, open your mind. If you're liking what you're seeing, please consider liking and subscribing. I really want to know what your thoughts and comments are, please. Let me know. This adventure and this test was part of a greater journey that I'm on, which has kind of gotten me away from things like quad cortexes and Boss GT1000s and HX effects units and things. I'm going kind of back to old school tones and sounds. So I'm getting rid of a bunch of stuff and getting other stuff. It's all just stuff. This should round out 2022 for Densco Music this year. Stay tuned for some awesome stuff next year. Stay safe, everybody. All the best for a happy and prosperous 2023. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Open your mind. And skill out.